I'm here at the Pen American Center, and I look at all these books, and I look at all the people that you guys have interviewed in the past. Very literary, very smart. I'm writing zombie fart jokes. I'm, is this better? Talk, 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 talk. Yes. Cool. Oh, that's right. Okay. Uh, my name is Alan Golcher. Uh, my new book is called Paul is Undead, The British Zombie Invasion, and it is a remix depicting the story of the Beatles as if three of them were zombies, John, Paul, and George, and then Ringo was a ninja. Yeah. This story is, this book is really interesting. It's told as an oral history, and there are 53 characters in it. And I am one of those 53 characters. I'm, I'm the narrator. I'm the one that was running around the world trying to track down these interviews. Kind of new journalism time. Yeah, exactly. Right? <laughs> uh, and that's, I'm very proud of the, my ability to write in different voices, which I think is something that young writers could really have fun with. You know, p write a short story from like three different perspectives. Tell the same story, like kind of do it Rashomon style. Um, different voices lead you, it, it opens you up. Um, 53 voices is a lot of voices. Um, so are there, is there a little bit of Alan in all these characters? Probably not, because some of them are just evil, evil people, and I, I don't think I'm an evil, evil person. Um, maybe, maybe I infuse myself a little in, in the uh, Lennon and McCartney thing. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna stand behind that, but maybe. I'll let the reader decide. Right, 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 right. Uh, this book is going to be, I'm predicting, with the students in the Writing Institute, a big hit. Thank you. Because, because it allows them to start to unpack the zombie legend. Well, I think when you do um, paranormal and speculative fiction in general, you create your universe, and within that universe, there have to be rules. And you have to make those rules and abide by those rules. Um, so, in, in Paul is Undead, I didn't necessarily abide by the traditional zombie rules. I sort of used them for my own purposes. Um, most zombies can detach their limbs, but they can't necessarily reattach them. I needed the Beatles to always have limbs because you can't play a guitar with no arms. Um, <laughs> yeah. it, it, this suited my purposes. If I needed the zombies to have uh, expandable tongues to be able to snake their tongue through uh, an ear up into the cerebral cortex, th these zombies could do that. Like, we were, we were speaking earlier about fast zombies versus slow zombies. Yes, the um, raging controversy. <laughs> it is raging. a raging controversy. I don't think of it as fast versus slow. I think of it as high functioning versus low functioning. And I think that zombie, I think that's the way zombie fanatics look at it. Oh, it's a high functioning, it's a, it's a low functioning. Um, obviously, for, for my needs and Paul's Undead, I needed them to be very high functioning because they are the Beatles. They're still the Beatles. They're just zombie slash ninja Beatles. Um, but... Use it, you know, it's, it, if it's about the storytelling, use what you need to make your story work. You know, you bend the genre, have fun with it. And I think that's something that, I had a ton of fun with this book. Yeah. You know, I just went for it. I, I, I wrote as loud as I possibly could. And I think that's also really important, you know, just don't hold back. Right. You know, if you're going to tell a story, if you're going to tell a goofy story, if you're going to tell a, a paranormal story, do it. Have fun with it. No one's going to tag you on it. No one's going to smack you on your head and say, you're getting that wrong because there is no wrong. But you also, I mean, in this book, mm -hmm. you recognize a, sto a compelling story. And, I mean, the idea of that folklore, that, that very plastic folklore in the making, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you see the potential for that as a storyteller, as a, as a receiver of the story, and also as a giver of the story, and you ride that. Right, well, this is the first time you're, you, I'm thinking of this, but based on what we were just talking about, the Beatles story is very... Uh, Everybody who knows anything about the Beatles knows the big points of the story. You've got a framework. You've got a mythology. I took that mythology and just, you know, pulled out my saxophone and blew all over it. Um, so, yeah, I, I totally hear what you're saying. Mm -hmm. You know, the storyteller, you, you take this framework, you have fun with it. It's, it's just, it's very simple. It really is. Go for it. Right. Have fun. So that's interesting, this idea of writing as loud as you can, mm -hmm. because um, we've talked with students in writing workshops about authors who have had to um, you know, paralyze themselves to some extent mm -hmm. in order to write as loud as they can. You didn't have to paralyze a part of your brain in order to let people You work. can't. You can't, because you're, you're blocking, like you said. Yeah. You, you're blocking off a part of yourself, and if you block off a part of yourself, you're blocking off a part of your art. Let it go. You know, what, what are you holding it back for? What's the point? If you're going to sit there in front of the key, you know, in front of your little laptop 
and say, I'm writing for an hour today, I'm writing for four hours today, I'm writing a short story, I'm writing a book, do it. <laughs> do it, do just it. do it and have fun with it. If it sucks, delete it and do it again tomorrow. Right. You know, if it's not going well, walk away, start again tomorrow. But do it and be proud of it, have fun with it. And I've been really lucky in that I, I have a bulletproof ego. You're going to get rejected as a writer. It's going to happen either in a class, you know, someone, some other student is going to say, oh, that, that ain't working for me. Uh, by an editor who's going to say, this is not what I wanted. This is, it's all personal taste. But you know what? Work with people. It can be, writing can be collaborative. Telling your story can be a really collaborative uh, uh, endeavor. And when it is collaborative, I've found that it, it, it's kind of special. You know, when, you, it, when you're a writer, it's a lonely profession. Um, but when you get to the point where you're working with a, an editor, an agent, uh, you know, an artist, as the case may be with Paul's Undead, it's a team effort, and all of a sudden, you know, it's a team sport. And team sports are fun, you know? I don't get to play basketball. This is my basketball. Right. You know? Right. And in general, what is on your iPod? How do you use your iPod? And when I say, how do you use your iPod, I'm thinking also of music as um, inspiration, music as goad, and um, music as, since you are an accomplished musician, music as a com complementary discipline to the writing work that you do. My background as a musician and my first musical love, which is jazz, has really, um, I don't want to say influenced as much as infused my writing. Um, jazz is so improvisation rooted, but the best jazz to me is there, there is a structure to it. So you've got your melody, you've got your chord structure, and then you improvise over the chord structure. And that's kind of the way I, I approach my writing. I do my outline. Sometimes I won't do an outline. Sometimes I'll do like the barest sketch, and then I'll kind of improvise over it. And, you know, I, I'm not a believer in God, but if there is some being up there, he's blessed me with the ability to be a good first draft guy. And I do think that that stems from... Um, being able to improvise over a set of chord changes. My first instinct is to, you know, you can't change that. So that's my mindset. It's like, in a sense, it's almost like, okay, this is my one crack at it. Yeah, I can go over and edit it again. But my first instinct has always been my best instinct. And I'm not saying that if you listen to your John Coltrane and your Miles Davis and your Charles Mingus and your Art Blakey, you're going to all of a sudden become a great writer. But for me, having that improvisational background has really helped. And it also, it's also very freeing. Going back to what we were talking about earlier, th there's a certain freedom to jazz, to improvising, etc. And you, you can't hold back. If you're going to be a jazz musician, you, you can't hold back. You just got to go for it. And that's the way I try and approach my writing. Mm -hmm. um, ironically enough, I would say 80% of my iPod is jazz. Mm -hmm. It's mostly jazz. I love rock. I love classic rock. There are certain you know, artists right now that I, that I really love, but when I go, when I want to listen to what I want to listen to, I'm going to bust out like some Lee Morgan or some Hank Mobley or some Thelonious Monk. That's my, that's my go-to music. Is there a storyteller from your life, you know, from growing up or from being in an important place at an important time, is there a person, you know, even a stranger who once told you a story that that galvanized you, changed you. The first adult writer that I read, and I'm doing finger quotes for those of you listening <laughs> right now, um, was Stephen King. Um, you know, by those big 600, 700 page early books of his. And he told stories. I, you know, I've, I've said that his early work is kind of a modern day Dickens kind of thing, because Dickens was a storyteller, straight up story. You know, his, his message was very simple, as in Stephen King's, good versus evil. It's better to be good, you know? Um, and that's kind of, and Stephen went for it, and that's kind of what inspired me to go for it. Uh, the interesting thing is I never thought I could actually be a real writer, more finger quotes, real writer. Um, it wasn't, so, you know, I loved reading, I appreciated great books, I appreciated fun books, but it wasn't until I, I think I turned 29, 30 that I thought this is something that I could A, do well and B, be happy doing. Um, well, thank you. You've given us a lot of takeaways as well as my pleasure. perspective my on, pleasure. on the writing life and the writing undead, I guess. <laughs> as well. A lot of fun. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm proud to have, uh, be part of this whole uh, pen thing. It's, it's a pretty prestigious uh, mm -hmm. thing 
you know, I'm happy to be here. 